Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be adding the enemies to our Space Invaders game. At the moment this is what our game looks like. We have our spaceship on our screen. We can move the spaceship and we can fire bullets that are subject to a cooldown mechanic. Alright, so to add the enemies we're going to add, open our main.javascript file and we're going to begin in the constant state where we're going to be adding a couple of new values. The first value we're going to add is an enemies array. And this array is going to help us save all the enemies in one list that we can then iterate through to make the same changes to all the enemies. Then we're going to also specify an enemy width. And the enemy width is simply the width of the enemy in pixels that is going to be displayed on our game window. And we're going to make the enemy spaceships just as big as the just as big as the player's spaceship which is going to be 50 pixel the last value we're going to be adding is the number of enemies that we want to show on our screen and we're going to set this to 16 so more specifically there is going to be two rows of eight enemies the next thing we want to do is we want to create some new functions we're going to go below the section with the player's functions and we're going to create a new comment under which we're going to be creating all the functions that concern the enemy. The first function we're going to create is the create enemy function. This function does several things. The first thing it does is it displays an enemy spaceship on our game window. In addition to that, it adds the enemy spaceship to the enemy's array so that we can manipulate the enemy later on in the update function. And it also sets the image size of the enemy spaceship and it also sets the initial position of the enemy spaceship. The next function that we're going to create is the update enemies function. And this function will be responsible for moving the enemy on our screen. More specifically, we want the enemy to move in an elliptical motion that we're going to implement in just a moment. And since we have multiple enemies, we're going to be adding a for loop that loops through the entire enemy's array so that each enemy follows the same path. All right, so the last function that we're going to create in this video is the create enemies function. Now, this function is not to be confused with the create enemy function that we created beforehand. The create enemies plural function is going to be responsible for creating two rows full of enemies. So if we have a look at this function in a little bit more detail, you can see that the first for loop is responsible for creating the first row of enemies, which we'll see on screen in a second. And remember how these two arguments over here in the create enemy function are the x and the y coordinates. You can see that the value over here in the second row is a bit larger than it is over here in the first row and that is because we want the second row of enemies to appear below the first row. So the difference between these two um, values over here gives us the offset between the two rows of enemies. Alright so we've created all the functions that we need. The last thing that needs to be done is we need to create a call to the update enemies function in our main update function and below in the initialize game section we're not only going to create a player when we initialize the game but we also want to create the enemies finally in the dot css we need to make one small adjustment which is we need to set the positioning of the enemies to absolute so finally if we go ahead and run this within our browser you can see that the enemies um, the enemy sh spaceships show on screen and we can shoot our lasers. Now one final thing that I do want to add is that it's very simple to change the trajectory of the spaceship's movement. So for example, if we close this and go back to our main.js file and in the update enemies functions, we can change the sine function to a cosine function. And if we do that, you'll see that the motion becomes 
a bit better and it stops going diagonally but now it's going in nice elliptical motion. Alright, so that's it for this episode. See you in the next one.